Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You. And in this video, I'm going to be going over Terraform's import block and how they've made it a lot easier to import resources that you've been either working with outside of Terraform or you're trying to, you know, import resources, um, you know, through your pipelines of choice, whether it's through GitHub or Azure DevOps. So uh, if you find this video interesting, like and subscribe. Um, check out some of my other videos on Terraform or Azure related networking infrastructure. Um, so again, in this video, uh, going to go through this and show how easy it can be to uh, import resources into um, your modules or just, you know, standard, just single resources and things like that. And so with the import block, they also made it to where you can utilize for each's. And the reason why that's great is because if you say you're, you you are using, um, you know, whether it be just TFRs files or um, importing a lot of resources, you can stage a lot of uh, these imports ahead of time before you deploy them. So you can read up on that here on their website. So if, if I go to my uh, VS Code here, let me pull it up. Um, basically, what I do is, or what I have is a import block, which I'll, Grab from another one of one of my other repos here. Let me open up that folder. And grab that file. So I use this uh quite a bit here. So basically instead of reinventing the wheel, go oh, I should have added to the workspace. I'll just grab this real quick. So I'm gonna look for no, oh, go back one folder. Folder, oh, there we go. So main, okay, so this import block here. So what I do is, so there's a for each here that says for each for key value in var dot research group data, key value if value dot import. So basically if the value dot import is true, run through and get the ID and then add this to the module dot research group dot Azure RM research group dot the resource group, which is the um, um, name of that uh, resource and then each dot key. So that's how I'm, um, I'm, I'm uh, stepping through each of those. And so I'm going to copy this here and just show you how this works. So I'm going to take this and I know I'm moving around a lot, but let me add another folder to this existing workspace here. So this is where my pipelines sit. And so I'm going to add this block right underneath here. And it's already kind of set up to be imported into this resource group. But uh, so now what I need to do is uh, let me go find two resource groups that I know I deployed in the portal that I can um, import into my state file. So if I go into, let me open up the portal here. So if I go to resource groups here, I got a, let's see, I'm gonna do this test MTRG and TF state. So before I get in, I do need to add some variables into my um, file here. So under resource group, I just need to add a import and that's going to say optional and then import resource ID and that's going to be an optional string. So basically these are optional um, that way if uh, you know you don't import anything uh, you this won't complain when it runs. So let's go ahead and save that and let's save this. And then in my folder here, let me see which pipeline I have running. Okay, so I'm going to take the folder this is looking into. Triggers. Central US. Okay. So under the central US folder, 
basically going to take these RGs that are, aren't deployed and change them. So I'm just going to change this to my TF state. And these are just my keys. That's not actually my resource group name, but I like to keep my keys the same as the uh, name of the resource. That way they're pretty unique across environments. Go back here. What was the other one called? Um, test empty RG. And so next I'm going to need the resource ID of that particular resource. And so what I'm going to have import equals true. And then import resource ID equals, and I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to add that down here as well. Import equals true. And I'm actually just going to take this line. Now let me change that up there. Since they're in the same subscription and the resource group just changes, I, uh, but you would make sure that these match up with what your resource ID is. So this would just depend on what kind of, um, uh, resource you're trying to import, whether it's a VNet, resource group, databases, or, you know, virtual machines or whatnot. So now I'm going to go ahead and save those. And now I should be able to push these changes up. So I probably, let me go new terminal. So let's see, git, and I think I'm on the main branch, so yes. So I'm just gonna do a commit. Just have to stage those changes. So I need my variables, my main.tf and this RG. So git commit dash m import resource groups. So, all right, so I pushed those up to main. Um, obviously, you know, work out of your branches or however you're doing them, but this is just my test environment. So I go to my pipelines. I'm seeing that this is running. And I got two environments here. So uh, one just runs and uh, the other one probably won't see anything in the plane. So it looks like, Oh, you know what? I might have had that one actually pause. Let me edit it and check. Oh, okay. I didn't have any. So let me move. Let me actually move that down. So instead of it being in. Oh, no. Yeah, it's running out of development. Okay. Just making sure. The pipelines. Down here. So now it's running through its init. Downloading all the provider plug plugins and, and modules. And so I'm using uh, Microsoft's uh, hosted uh, um, agents. So each time it runs, it's going to install all of these particular uh, modules and stuff like that. So, or in scripts and things. So if you're using. Oh, you know, actually, I got to make sure I set that. To, oh, no, I didn't. I need to set these to true. And. Git commit. Enable resource groups. And the way, the reason it's like that is because when I look at, uh, if you if you guys ever wanna check out my modules, they're on my GitHub. Um, in the modules, there's a resource group module and it's basically saying if value.enable um, for each this. So it's only looking for uh, resource groups to deploy if it's set to true. So let's go back. That's why in the plan, it's probably going to say nothing, no changes to 
deploy. Now, if we go back here, it's going to run again. And that's the thing with using the um, hosted agents. You're going to see it's going to have to download everything again. But it's, uh, you know, free and you, know, you don't have to worry about any anything lingering around. So it always downloads the latest and uh, works off of that. So now what we should see here is two RGs being uh, ready to be imported. And the great thing about that is if you have like say a ton of VNets and other resources, you can stage all of your TFRs, all of your imports ahead of time. And then when you're ready to import them in, you can basically have everything set to make sure everything's being imported with the right configuration. Um, that way when you do run it again, there's no changes that's uh, waiting to be um, made, such as like, you know, accidentally deleting a subnet or the VNet, you know, IP prefix changing and things like that. So in this plan, like I said, we should see two imports waiting to happen. Go back to the plan here. So it says this, your infrastructure matches the configuration. So let's see why it says that. It could be, let me see, let's see if it actually found any region, non pro. Oh, okay. All right, another, another distinction. So I need to put it in the right folder path. So region, uh, landing zones. Region Central US. Oh, non prod. And then TFRs. Smooth that down in there. Made quite a bit of changes to some things, so let me just make sure that my folder path is correct. Okay. That's better. And correct. And that's there. Okay. Third time's a charm. Deploy resource groups. Group. Change RG folder. All right, and then that's going to run again. And I'll pause that until that actually finishes there. Okay, so glad I actually uh, did do a pause because um, I did catch up another particular error. So going back to my um, code, I had to um, actually change the location to match, the uh, name to match, and uh, I had test instead of TS state as the import resource ID. So now that that's actually staged and ready inside our plan, we can see that there's two particular uh, resources ready to be imported. And then there's also two changes. But what you really do want is uh, you don't want any changes. But you know what? These are tags. Um, it's going to add them. Um, I'm not too worried about that. But you don't, just want to make sure you don't see anything that has like deletions or anything. So now if I go to my releases, um, I should have a release and it looks like it deployed. So yes, so it looks like that deployed. So now um, if I run this again, I should have no changes. Now if I go back in and look at, uh, actually we can actually go to the release and see what it did here on the apply. So we see the imports happening, importing, importing, complete. And that's good. I just have my releases set to deploy immediately. It's for deployment. So I don't have to um, modify anything. So now if I go to tags, we see the tag getting added. And um, basically that's it. So now if I go to, well, my state file is going to have the resources imported in there. And you can kind of modify that to your liking to be able to do that for any other particular um, resources. So, for example, let's just do one other 
kind of research. We're not going to actually deploy it, but let's say you want to go to our main.tf, um, your virtual network. Um, actually, and sometimes it's even better to kind of align these a little better. So maybe it goes on top of the actual resource. So now I want to import VNets. So my module is virtual network. So, um, but also my variable is virtual network data. So on my main.tf, it's going to be var that virtual network data, and then each dot value dot import resource resource ID stays the same, and then the module is going to be module dot virtual network dot azure m virtual network, and then this is going to be the virtual network's uh, resource name. So if I go into my modules Azure virtual network and then my resource it's going to be so some people do main some people do the name of the vnet um, you know whatever best practices you follow and then you change that and then in the variables I'll then need to basically take these same variables and add that there and now VNet virtual networks can um, be imported using the uh, resource ID and they can be full reached in, inside of your t TFR. So now that gives you the ability to um, take your TFRs and align everything and you can set import to false. And you can stage all your TFRs files, all your VNets, your resource groups. And then when it comes time to import, you can just turn these on one by one. And then once these are imported, you can actually remove both of these, um, no problem. You can actually even remove them from your main.tf, the import block, and it will cause no problems. But you know, it'd be good to keep those in there for future imports so that you don't have to keep going back and making modifications. So now if we go back to our pipeline and we look at the development, plan again it should say no changes your infrastructure matches the configuration so again that's it there for how to import using four reaches and terraforms uh, import block again to make your life a lot easier if you have any questions in regards to how that's set up um, leave me a comment down below and i'll be sure to get back with you again thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time